Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over a topic that people often ask about, which is importing custom graphics into KiCad. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the silkscreen layer. This can be extended to other layers, like the copper layer, uh, the solder mask layer, other, other things. And, and stacking all those things up can allow you to make really interesting artwork. I will leave that for other videos uh, and or we'll talk about it later. Uh, today we're just going to be talking about a simple import because it's not really all that simple. And uh, check out how to do this. Now, this is part of my flow. Anytime I put a logo on a board, anytime I put you know any art on a board, usually I'm doing this kind of thing. Even to the point where if you want a, a, uh, a font that's outside of the default KiCad font, you need to do this. You need to generate the font elsewhere, and then you need to import that graphic into the board. And uh, it's frustrating, but there's really only one font available. So you know, if you're a typography nut, or even if you just like good design, sometimes you're going to move outside of the defaults that are available in KiCad. That's fine with me. OK, so we're going to take a look at how to actually import this stuff. Let's take a look over here. This Actually, this method is not all that different from uh, KiCad 4.0. So what we're doing is open bitmap, bitmap to converter. You see it's uh, the, the A with the little measurement lines on it. Uh, so we're going to load up a, a file here. I just grabbed a generic KiCad logo off the net. It is a PNG. BMPs also work. I think JPEGs work. Oh, yeah, JPEGs work as well. Here we go. So all of these different file formats work. That's great. Uh, but they are images. They are rendered images, and that's an important thing here. So what we're going to say is that this is, the, this is a rendered image. You know, Graphics and SVGs and similar things, you have to take an SVG and ge generate a rendered image and then convert it. Because what it's doing is it's actually grabbing the different colors, it's grabbing the lines and the, and, and the, uh, the different darkness and lightness parts, and it's actually making that into a vector file, which is underneath the surface there. OK. so. Uh, first step we need to do is we need to go from the colored picture to a grayscale picture. And we see here that there are different levels here. I'm going to turn off the negative. And you see there's you know three different uh, layers. Just in the, the KI part here, there's three different colors. And what that matters for is actually for the threshold. And this is ultimately what's going to be generated. If we take the slider here and we slide it left and right, we can see kind of what what is and isn't uh, what isn't and isn't generated, and so here we see that the only the box is grabbed because the box has a slightly darker uh, outline than the inner part, and so in order to grab that we actually need to increase the threshold, and so there's some middle point here where you know we can grab some or all of it, right? And so I'm going to set it right about I think eh, about like 50. Five, yeah, okay. That's set at fifty-five. This kind of looks like the KiCad logo. Like I said, there's only really there's there's only two colors you can use in a silkscreen logo. If you want to have any kind of you know fades or anything like that, like that, you need to start playing around with stippling or other artistic kind of things that newspapers use in order to get uh, good looking fades. And that is a, a whole community unto itself. I do recommend following the Badge Life hashtag on Twitter. I think there's great art that comes out of that. Um, and so, OK, so we're going to grab this. We're going to say this is our logo here. Uh, all, all other things to mention is that this size of the picture actually matters quite a bit as well. And so uh, this is 486 by 350 pixels. That's just the image I grabbed off the internet. This is ultimately what, what is our conversion here. And so we're going to set this at a 300 DPI. It actually shouldn't matter too much of what the native resolution of this thing is. Um, I, I, I do reserve the right to be wrong about that. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, this is going to change what our size is. Now, this is showing in millimeters, uh, but it's about 300. Uh, let's see, so 300 into uh, four, 450 would be one and a half inches, right? So just dots per inch. So if you take 486 dots divided by 300, you get about 1.5 inches or 41 uh, millimeters. So about 1.5 by about you know 1.1 or 1.2 inches. That's about the size that our, our thing will be in actual size put onto the board. We can actually change. If we change this, we should be able to change the, the uh, you know, it's changing the resolution, quote unquote. But what it's really doing is it's changing the size. That's ultimately what we care about. Now, I would, rec I would recommend locking this stuff together. And what I'll try and show in future videos, what I often do is I generate everything in a vector program with 1,000 DPI resolution, so that when I do the math in KiCad, it's very easy. So if a thousand, if that's a thousand, um, a thousand pixels wide, it's actually one inch wide. I'll set this to a thousand, and then I'll import that uh, art artwork together. OK, so now we've got our thing in here. We're going to export it as a KiCad mod file. We've got a threshold set. We actually are going to set this as a negative. Now, what, what we're actually showing here is the white part is actually going to be what gets exported as a silkscreen layer. So in this case, yes, we, want, we might want the, Ki, the Ki here exported, but it's going to grab everything around that as well. And so we actually want the negative here. So we're going to just export the outline here, and then the CAD will be in, uh, will be in silkscreen. We can also select which layer we want it to be on. 
uh, silk screen, solder mask, Eco 1 or Eco 2. This is all adjustable later as well. We'll show that in a different one. All right, we're going to hit export here. We're going to export it into our test board uh, thing. And now this is another thing that we need to do. We need to right click. This is going to be creating an ad hoc library here. So we're going to call this test board, oops, board.pretty. And now this is how the KiCad libraries work, right? They are folder structures for the footprints, at least. They're folder structures, and you put it into that folder as long as you have dot KiCad mod files inside a dot pretty folder. I don't know where that came from. Uh, then it will recognize it as a library. We will have to add it here in a second. So we're going to call it test board footprint FP. And there we go. So now it's been exported. Super simple, right? OK, so let's go to the actual layout. This is the one we were working on the other day. Now what we have to do is we actually have to add that library here, right? And so we're going to say manage footprint libraries. We're going to go to uh, browse libraries. And then you see, it are, because it's already in the project, which is great, we're going to just select that, that directory we just created there. Hit OK. And now it does recognize it as a KiCad library. Now, if we don't want this to be in the global libraries, we can actually uh, we can remove it. Or we can, I think we can we cut. Oops. Select it. I think we can cut it and then put it over here, a pen library. And paste. Okay, so now this is just a project-specific library, which we can just uh, so it won't get added to every other project that we have there if this library goes away. Okay, that's it. Okay. Now we're going to go into the footprint editor, or sorry, we're going to try and add a footprint here. So I'm going to hit O or click this button here, click the middle, and here is that dialog. We're going to select by browser, and we're going to try and find. You know, there's the test board. So there is the test board uh, library that we created. And there is the file. This is the testboard.pretty. So if we, we select another one just to double check here, so we have the verister. <laughs> and testboard.pretty, this is the actual uh, footprint that we put in here. And now we can go and put this somewhere in our board. Now, what you'll see is you'll see other things in here. There's a, you know, it's, it's labeled as logo, it's a reference G and value logo. This is something we'll go over in future. Uh, future uh, videos about how to modify these files and stuff like that. That is something you sometimes have to do. But the default is, yes, it will be a G for graphics logo. And you see that and we can actually measure this now. So if you go to inches, I guess we were in millimeters. It's 41 by 25 or so, right? So we can go Control-Shift-M, click over here. So let's see, it's about, yeah, it's about 41. I guess it's to the, oh, it's to the edge of the, uh, it's not just to the edge of the, uh, the graphic itself. It's the actual, the entire size of this thing. And uh, yeah, so it's about 41 millimeters by uh, shift M. This one's about yeah 20 millimeters here. Great. So we've added a graphic to our uh, our our board now, and we can like it like like most other footprints here. We can move it around. Um, we can edit it if we need to. And there are you know you basically can replace it. You can do a lot of stuff. You can lock it in place, and uh, and. Another thing that you might want to do is you might want to actually associate this with a component in your uh, schematic as well so that it doesn't go away when you update your diagrams. That is one thing that the F8 button might end up messing up in the future here. So that's something to keep in mind. There is a whole world of graphics and uh, different artwork you might want to add to PCBs. Interestingly, I've seen more and more people using you know, PCBs as a artwork medium just because it's a pretty low cost way to do you know, sheets of things, right? So the PCB industrial complex for making making lots of PCBs is uh, is pretty pretty well sussed out and there's a lot of uh, you know you can basically make big things for pretty cheaply uh, you know usually coming from China and uh, that's that's been that's made for some interesting entrance into the field in terms of artwork and, and similar things I think that also plays well into you know making your boards look a little better even just small things about adding adding logos so that you can identify your own board or you can you know, add it for your client boards or whatever you happen to be doing with KiCad. I think that really makes for a, a, a better experience and it makes for nicer looking boards. We'll be doing more stuff about graphics and uh, other ways that you can make your boards look better in KiCad and KiCad 5.0. Like I said, the 4.0 and to 5.0 hasn't changed too much, but I do expect things to be changing in 5.1 as well. Some of this stuff has been uh, you know, latent and uh, I think that the the entire workflow is ultimately something we'll be covering here. We have uh, some other some other projects that we've worked on in the past that we might we might showcase and and show you how to do that as well.
you have questions about artwork, you can always go over to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. If you want to learn more about how to build boards and build electronics in general, you can go to the Contextual Electronics forums. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.